do the first example uh, in our practice exam for MEC202 polymer, uh, polymer composite materials, basically polymer physics. Um, so let's get into it. So it is going to be question one. We're not chemists, but we are polymer chemists. So you can kind of guess at what the topic's going to be. Um, essentially, we're going to be looking at lecture two material, step growth polymerization, chain growth polymerization, Carruthers equation, uh, branching, all those good stuff. So um, polymerize PTT from the available monitors below. So we want to polymerize this polymer here. You can do a one or two step reaction, your choice. Super kind on this one. So if I want to create this polymer, I'm going to essentially react this. C double bond O. I can kind of see here, we're going to have our old friend, our nucleophilic acyl substitution. Plus, I'm going to choose this polymer, and I need one, two, three, two, three. I'm going to choose this one right here. Oh, I'm going to do a little bit. Two, three, uh, OH. So when I add those together, it is going to, again, here's my uh, nucleophile, attacks this electrophile here. Again, electrons are being pulled from this one and this one. We know this OH, the leaving group. That has a KEQ of about approximately one. So we're going to have to remove that byproduct to create a high molecular weight polymer. Once we do that, we're going to have our byproduct of water. Uh, so this is going to leave. It's going to combine with this H. And then we're going to get what we have here. So, uh, and that's going to also attack. Same thing on the other side. So what we're left with is going to be a polymer like this. O. Here, excuse my, I'm sure all the chemists are cringing right now. CH2, uh, excuse me, uh, let me erase a little bit right here. Dash O, dash CH2, three, dash O, and that's it. So what type of polymerization is this? Step growth, so not chain growth polymerization. Um, and again, be ready if you need a two-step reaction uh, in our byproducts, our H2O. We need to get rid of that. We need to remove them. Why? Because, of, again, our K-equilibrium constant is going to be our uh, products over reactants. So C, B over A and B. This KEQ is fixed at 1. We can't change that once we fixed our chemistry. These uh, reactants aren't changing. So the only way we could increase uh, the product that we want, C, our polymer here, we need to get rid of this guy. Make this lower. And again, AQ is a constant. So C, we must increase uh, the product that we want. So now, uh, how would you go about making um, this PMMA with the following monomers to choose from? So that's below. So let's go ahead and answer that question first. Is there anything else? Oh, so, so nice. No sub question on that one. So I want to make this polymer now. How can I do that? Well, this one doesn't really even make sense to use. Uh, there's no CH3s here. There's no, I can't see any CH3s around here. So you're left with just this one. Again, very, very nice. How are we going to polymerize this one? Not step growth polymerization this time. Instead, we have to use our chain growth. So I'm going to use my free radical is going to come in. So I'm actually going to draw it right here. So I have my free radical, or my little you know, minus sign here. It's going to attack this double bond. We're going to go through our steps of initiation. We're going to two propagate, because we're going to take this polymer here. So it's going to be C, H, H, C, C, three, and then C double bond to O. Let's go down a little bit. O, C, H, three. And then our free radical, again, is right here. And it's going to continue to propagate. And it's going to attack the next monomer unit of all this X. So it's going, to attack, it's going to attack that same double bond here in X. And it's going to continue to propagate. Three, you have that optional step of chain transfer. So instead of propagating in this direction, who knows? It could uh, That CH3 can be over here. And then it could start to propagate and branch. Um, so that chain transfer step can cause the branching to occur as we've kind of discussed previously in class. Um, and the last step is five, or four, excuse me, four, initiation, propagation, termination. So when either two, three free radicals from other ones cancel out or your reaction stops. 
So that's how um, we weren't even asked that. Uh, we were asked to polymerize that. So that's how we're going to do it. So show those steps on your exam. Uh, be sure to do so. <laughs> Don't just go the quick route like I did. So I've had other polymer chemists make this polymer for me. And I found that material exhibited a wide range of mechanical properties and melted at different temperatures. What method do you think they chose for polymerization? Uh, and what would you do differently so the polymer properties are consistent? So we talked about that third step, that chain transfer step. So if we use free radical polymerization, like I mentioned, we have that possibility of branching. So I could form branches. Once the branches form, I can't stack my polymer uh, as close. Uh, we know that our van der Waals forces van der Waals, decay as r to the minus 6. So as those distances, or the d, or d over 6, as the distance between chains increase, this force, these intermolecular interactions, decrease dramatically. Thus, I'll melt at lower temperatures. I'll have lower stiffness. Um, alternatively, if I pick a, uh, a polymerization route where I have very few branches, I could stack these close together, higher melting temperatures, et cetera, et cetera. So we know from our lecture, too, that we have um, a way to do chain, um, uh, chain growth polymerization that minimizes that chain transfer step, and that is ziegler not catalysis. Because we have that kind of lock and key, again, mechanism, where it was all, it's only going to propagate one way. It's going to eliminate or minimize those chain transfer steps. So that's what I would do. I don't know how to do Ziegler catalysis, catalysis, but that would be my method I would tell that chemist to do. So, see, you draw a curve of how degree of polymerization will vary as a function of the extent of reaction for the A and B polymerization routes. So, degree of polymerization as a function of P. I'm going to draw A. I'm going to have this be blue. So, A was our step growth. So, we know in step growth, we're initially really, 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 really low, and then exponentially increasing. Or not exponentially, but uh, we know what equation we need to do there. And for my chain growth, initially here, and then asymptotically approaches. Again, that's just what we've kind of um, spoken about previously in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this is just the uh, this exact curve right here. So let's go back to lecture two. Let's go to presentation two. Probably easier to find. Ooh, maybe it won't be easier to find. So there's step growth. Again, chain growth, step growth, polymerization. We know that this is governed by the Carruthers equation as well. So let's go back to the exam. So I know that here that this is going to be governed by the Carruthers where dPn equals uh, going to be 1 over or 1 plus r, excuse me, over 1 plus r minus 2pr. We could confirm that in our lecture notes as well. So let's go back to our Carruthers equation. Way down here. Oh, I'm so good. <laughs> right there. So that's your Carruthers equation. And again, that only holds for step growth. We do not have an equation for that chain growth polymerization that we talked about in this class. So uh, let's see. Label each curve, algebraic expression, bunch of time, uh, put it there. All right. So now it says I've actually measured the molecular rate of polymer chain in A and found 20 milligrams of uh, 20 milligrams of a polymer with this molecular weight. I've got 20 milligrams polymer with this molecular weight, 10 with this molecular weight, 75 with this molecular weight. Repeat unit molar mass is 215. What is MN, DPN, and PDI? How would you characterize the polydispersity of the sample? Any concerns? How long will it take you to polymerize this uh, polymer, assuming still a metric ratio of 0.98? So let's go ahead and calculate this out. I'm going to bring Mathematica up. So I'm going to do a new document here. Oops, let's go back. Here, this guy here. So I know my, let's go ahead, my MR, my mass and repeat unit is 215. I was very nice to give that. Uh, my number of moles or number of uh, basically molecules is going to be for the first one, it's going to be my 20 milligrams. So 20 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by the molar mass of that, so 2,000. And I'm gonna multiply that grams per mole. I can multiply that by Avogadro's number too to get to the actual number, not number of moles. Actually, I can just leave it in moles. Um, grams, grams per mole, there. And two is gonna be the same thing. So 10 times 10 to the minus three divided by 30,000. There we go. And N3 is gonna be equal to uh, 
100, oh, excuse me, 75 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 3 divided by 100 grams per mole. So that's going to give me again those values in moles. So I have those, and I know that my mass of 1 is equal to 2,000. Now my mass of 2 is equal to 30,000. And I know my mass of 3 is equal to 100,000. There we go. So now all I have to do is do my m sub n. My now is equal to n1 times m1 plus n2 times m2 plus n3 times m3 divided by n1 plus n2 plus n3. mw is going to be essentially this right here. We have to square this, we have to divide this, just squaring the masses. Let's do this numerically. So that looks good right there. Square these masses. We know that my weight average molecular weight should be higher than m sub n. It must be, otherwise we did the calculation wrong. Let's double check that. And looks to be the case, so let's look at our PDI equals mw divided by mn must be greater than or equal to 1 yes but that polydispersity looks pretty high again we want to be between basically 2 and 5 for polymer so um actually let's look at the exact we want to be really between 1.5 and 2 so that is going to lead to some very different mechanical properties again you want to discuss that uh, in uh your solution so very it's if you have different molecular weight you know the viscosity changes we know a lot of different parameters change as well your melting temperature, et cetera, et cetera, the number of intermolecular interactions. Uh, so let's also calculate. So TPN equals MN divided by MR. My DPW is going to be equal to MW divided by MR. And those are the kind of the values they have there. So now to ask, how would you characterize the polydispersity sample? How long will it take you to polymerize this polymer, assuming that stoichiometric ratio uh, is equal to 0 0.98? So we want to solve, so here's my Carruthers equation. So we know that Carruthers is DPN is equal to uh, one plus R divided by one plus R minus two times P times R. So that's my Carruthers equation. Carruthers is uh, solving for DPN. So I need to solve for when does my DPN equal to my Carruthers Uh, Carruthers, where R goes to 0 0.98. So I'm just substituting in for the Carruthers. So how long is it going to take me to polymerize this polymer, assuming this stoichiometric ratio? I want to solve this for P, the extent of my reactant. And I get 0.987, so I have to wait a decent amount of time. But again, look at, appreciate this. The DPN of just 44, you know, this is a really, really, really small oligomer. And this is how long I have to wait, even when my stoichiometric ratio is this uh, low. Um, if it's 0.95, what do you think? Am I going to wait longer or, oops, I can't even make this ball, you know, I have to go beyond the extent of the reaction. But if it's 0.99, again, this is just to show, or 99.99, I don't have to wait too much at all. But again, or not, not really, you know, it's again, it's all relative. So, yeah, 0.98, this is how long you have to wait. That's the extent of the reaction that will, that will allow us to polymerize this polymer. So, finally, a nice qualitative question uh, that I really like to analyze. Have undergraduates do SEC, GPC experiments to confirm molecular weight distribution, qualitatively label peaks and density in terms of molecular weight. Why are the two curves so different? What could potentially be happening here? So I have these two different experiments. I'm going to change my pen here. So for my first set of experiments, I know that if I'm doing intensity versus elution time, or it could be also eluted volume too, um, I know that for my size exclusion permittography, that in my column, I have those beads, and the solution is slowed uh, is flowed slowly through these, um, and then it's going to either interact with the beads, these pores, if they're small enough in size, because they don't want to again, they want to mix the ener uh, energy uh, energy competition in mixing polymers. 
the competition or penalty does not want to enter the pore because you have to compress the polymer. So the polymers that are large are not going to want to explore any of the pores, regardless of this delta S of mixing. The energy penalty is too large. So low elution time, low elution volume, as we kind of saw in our lecture seven notes, is going to be my time limit. So for the polymers that we're dealing with, these can be like 100,000. And smaller polymers are going to explore more pores. Then again, the magnitude here does not matter uh, uh, in terms of the intensity. Instead, longer times, because they're going to explore more pores, it's going to take longer for them to flow out. Larger elution volumes, equivalently, that's going to be our smaller molecular weight. So 2,000. So low molecular weight. Now, what's going on between this curve where we have multiple peaks and this one? Well, we know that we could increase the resolution of our you know, SEC GPC experiment by adding more columns here. So if I add more columns with a wider distribution, so again, these pores can range from 10 angstroms to 10 to the fifth angstroms, five orders of magnitude approximately. Um, so you could uh, basically add more columns, get more resolution, and you'll be able to distinguish between these small, you know, these different molecular weights. But if I just have one column where there's uh, smaller distribution of pore sizes, uh, where we don't span this whole full range here, we're not going to be able to potentially distinguish. So all polymers might look big, all polymers like, might look small equivalently, and instead we're just going to get this single peak. So this is dangerous, right? Because this, you know, by using just a single uh, column here, which is going on with this experiment, our sample looks very monodispersed in term, in, as opposed to what it really is, which is very uh, polydispersed. So this makes it look like oh, we've produced a PI of one, because everything is you know, coming out at one time. This is, again, very, very, very dangerous. So you want to have multiple columns, you want to flow slow, and you want to kind of calibrate uh, your system here. So also, again, think of the scenario of if I flow the polymer fast, uh, how will this curve, uh, if, I, if I force the polymer through and I uh, basically uh, go very, very fast uh, and I extend the polymer, how is this going to kind of change this curve here? Uh, what could potentially happen? Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more in our office hours, or in our, in, our, in our review session next time. So remember, if I flow the polymer fast, I am possibly extending that polymer chain. I'm in the freely chain regime. My polymer is larger, so it's going to explore less of these pores. So you might see uh, basically some of these lower molecular weights. You may see kind of these curves shift over here to the left. That's a kind of a tip. And if I or if I put it in a bad solvent. You know, you can kind of imagine what might happen. It might shift to the right. Anyways, uh, tips for some possible examples. Oh, I will see you all uh, on Sunday, uh, and there's more videos coming up. So next time, next video, we're going to get into uh, chain models, excluded volume, and these viscosity uh, curves. So I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.